what's up, what's up? Welcome to the Mavuno Worship Night. We are so glad that you have joined us. My name is Kelvin Mugambi and I'm so excited for what we have in store for you today. So ladies and gentlemen, Worship Night is our, is our best opportunity to connect with God through music, through prayer and through dance. It happens every third Friday of the month. One, two, three third Friday of the month. So keep it locked. You can share with your friends, invite your family to the living room and we can join, join, join together and dance and pray together to our God. What would I do if I was you? I would save the number on the screen. This is the number to our WhatsApp page. So we get to hear from you whether if you have a testimony, we'll be glad to hear from you. You can send us a video, just a small selfie video saying what God has done in your life and we'll be glad to hear. And also, if you have a prayer concern or prayer message or request, so we have our team that is ready and willing, ready to pray with you. Our prayer counselors are on lock, are online right now, ready to pray with you. So you can just put in your message. It will be private to guarantee you that. And we, and we can pray with you today. So ladies and gentlemen, put your dancing shoes on. It is time to dance. And without much further ado, I'd like to invite our very own Pastor Maluki and the Mavuno Worship Team. Let's do this. A very good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. We'd like to welcome you to this month's edition of Worship Night. We're really excited that you could join us. Are you guys excited? Yeah. 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 So wherever you are, whether you're eating, whatever you're doing, just put it aside. And for the next few minutes, let's enjoy the presence of God together. Let's go! Come away, 
mercy yeah. endure forever. Yeah. We are more than conquerors, yes? Yes. If you believe it, say it with me. I am more than a conqueror in Christ I Jesus. Than Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Repeat after me. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Come on. Hey. like never before. So wherever you are, I'd like to welcome you to rise on your feet one more time and get ready for this because this next song, yo, you're going to need some space. Are you yeah. guys ready? Yeah. Are you guys ready? Yes, Let's go. Okay, here we go. Let's move from left to like this. Dunia 
Do you have any reggae lovers in the Woo! house? Yeah. Come on, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go to the comment section right now and say, I will go. So whatever God is calling you into, you know, at Fearless, we were taught that we have to be proactive, that we got to go forth. You know, we have to say that we are available. So this evening, this afternoon, this, this morning, wherever you are, just say, I will go. Tell me now, say, I will go. Come on. I place my life in your hands With a loving father I won't fail Igniting me a passion Yeah To set the world ablaze Hey, we're losing this, come on So through the fire, come on, say Through the fire Through the storm, through the storm. Hey. God on my side What a revelation I won't hide Come on, say Here I am, use me I will come without delay So through the fire, come on, say Through the fire, through the storm Send me I will go I 
Amen, amen. Indeed, we believe today together that we believe this word of the songs that we are singing, that we will go, not by ourselves, but by the power and by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody say amen. Now the word of the Lord in Psalm 84, 1-4 tells us, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. Now my heart and my flesh they cry out for the living God. Verse 3 says, Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Now blessed are those, and this is a good place to say amen, who amen. dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. I'll take that again. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, Jesus. They are ever praising you. And that's what we're doing today praising the Lord, acknowledging that He takes care of us, He has taken care of us before, and He will take care of us in the days to come. So today we are just basking in the glory of God's presence. Today we are praying that even as we surrender our hearts, the Lord will find our worship acceptable, like a sweet-smelling sacrifice, sweet-smelling incense to Him. So I just want to encourage you wherever you're watching us from, Take this moment and take your best posture of worship and just lift, lift your hands to the Lord, lift your voice to the Lord, lift a prayer to your Father as we get ready to go deeper into His presence. Amen.
I said, worthy is the Lamb, Lord, you are holy. You're holy. Say, are you, Lord God Almighty? And worthy is the Lamb. Say, to you tonight acknowledging that Lord you are holy you are worthy and we don't just say these things but we believe them because of the things that we have seen and even the things we have faith that are to come and so Lord this morning we acknowledge that in your word through your people through the various circumstances of our daily lives you give us promises the Lord gives us these things that are called promises to hold on to. And so today I just want to encourage someone. I need you to remember that God's faithfulness, Aichagui, this means it doesn't choose. God's faithfulness has no right time. God's faithfulness has no wrong time. God's faithfulness prevails forever. So I just want to call on to you wherever you're watching us from. I want you to remember the promises that God has said over your life. I want you to remember the promises that God has spoken over your life. I want you to call on his faithfulness. I want you to give him thanks for the things that he has already done, even as you prepare your heart for the things to come. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. Hallelujah. Even before the music, before the songs, and before the lyrics, before the words and before the actions, we place you first at the center of it all. As we declare, Lord, that your promises are ever true and they're yes and amen. And as we raise our worship to you, and as we give you all the glory, God, we say that our promises are yes and amen. You are our anchor, God. When we lose hope, God, you are there. You are our hope. When we feel hopeless, God, you are our strength when we are weak. We depend on you solely, oh God. And we rest on your amazing love that never ends and it never fails. You never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. You're my anchor to the ground. You're my hope and my firm foundation. You never let me down. I say I put my faith. I put my faith in Jesus. You're the anchor to the Yeah, my hope, my hope and 
your faithfulness, oh God. Great is your mercy, oh. Great is your love. Great is your victory, oh God. And we rest in your promises, oh God. And we rest in your victory, oh God. And we rest in your declarations, oh God.
Lord, receive all our worship. We do this for you. Yes, Lord, you deserve all the glory and the honor. You know, right now, it doesn't matter what we might be going through in our families. It doesn't matter what we are going through in our marriages or in your business or in your career. Right now, I want to declare in the name of Jesus that God deserves the glory. He is the Lord who doesn't change. He is the Lord who is always there for us, who never forsake us or leave us. And so, Father, we give you all the glory. We thank you because of your faithfulness somebody right now wherever you are i want you to lift up your voice and declare god you are faithful lift up your voice and just worship him declare that god I thank you for your mercies are new every morning. I thank you because you are able. I thank you for bringing me this far. I thank you, Father, for your miracles. You have been so good, Lord. You have protected me. I thank you for your provision. I thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, oh God, for being the Lord, my shepherd. Somebody right now declare, it doesn't matter what you are going through. Right now, maybe you can be going through through the furnace of fire. Maybe right now you're not feeling well. Maybe right now, actually, you're happy because there is a miracle. Live Lift up your voice and just declare, God, we give you all the glory and the honor. We thank you because you're a good God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, Father, we love you and we give you praise. You know, this week as I was going through my Twitter feed and, um, you know, there was one particular tweet that actually uh, uh, got my attention. You know, one of the Kenyans asked a very important question, a very pertinent question. And he asked, you know, he asked just many people actually just said, you know, uh, you know what, what in this season of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic, where have you lost passion is there something maybe right now is like you, you, you have lost passion for and i was so intrigued by the by the responses as people you know just tweeted back and they said you know what for me i've lost passion for books actually there are so many people who said you know what i used to read like three books a month but right now i cannot even finish one book you know, other people said, you know, I, I used to do so well in my studies, but this thing for online studies, I can't hack. I have lost my passion and my desire for my studies. There are people who are saying, you know what, I've lost my passion, you know, for, for, for relationships. I used to, you know, I used to be very social, but right now I just feel like I need to be in my house all by myself. People have lost passion. You know, there are people who are feeling, you know what, I've lost passion. Even for my career, I've lost passion. When it comes to, you know, to friendships or even to do some stuff I used to enjoy before. And I want to say this, uh, uh, God's people, this is the reality we are in right now. People are going through a hard time. There is so much of uncertainty. People are so, you know, they're, they're asking themselves, what is the future going to look like? You know, how is it going to be next year or even by December of 2010? How is it going to be in the next two years? And I want to say that it doesn't help when you listen to many analysts and, and people, you know, that they are focusing, that they are, for, that they are focused, is that the future is going to be actually a bit more worse because of this pandemic. And the question I had is just because they are saying the future may not be so good, does it mean there is no hope? Does it mean that God has changed? That, that, does it mean that the purposes of God in our lives do not come to pass? And I want to talk to somebody today. I don't know where you have lost your passion. Maybe there is a couple right now, they are saying we have lost passion for each other. You know, our marriage has changed. I don't know even where we are in our marriage. Maybe there is a teenager or a young adult looking at me right now and they're like, you know what, for me, Parsi, I've lost passion for my studies. I've lost passion for books. You know, maybe there is somebody right now, you have just lost passion even for life. You know, there is somebody actually who tweeted and said, for me, I just feel like dying. And I don't think actually they were joking. I've met people in this season, they have felt like, you know what, I, I'm better off dead than being alive. 
rather than go through the pain and the struggle that I'm going through right now. There are parents who have lost their passion, you know, in parenting, not because they hate their kids, but so much is happening in their lives that they feel like, you know what, I don't have any energy in me anymore. And, you know, as I prayed and, and I asked the Lord, you know, what do you want to do tonight in this particular worship night? This is what God is saying to us. God wants us to finish strong. He wants me and you to finish strong. Yes, I know the struggle is real. Yes, I know the pain is real. Yes, I know the uncertainty, the worry is real. I know the disappointment is real. I know the discouragement, the, the despair is real. I know that you have tried, you know, maybe to apply for jobs and nothing is coming through. I know the frustration is real. But I want to say this, God's people, that in the midst of all that, God wants you to finish strong in Jesus' name. You know, there are three groups of people, you know, and I want to address those people right now. There are going to be three groups of people as we grapple with this pandemic. There are people who are not going to finish. They will not finish at all. They started out so well, but they are going to finish. Actually, they will not finish. Maybe they are going to quit on a particular project. Maybe they're going to quit on their studies. Maybe they're going to quit on their marriages. Maybe they're going to quit, you know, on, on, the, on, their, on, their, on their desire or even their pursuit of purpose. There are people who will not be able to finish because they're going to quit. I don't know about you. And we're going to be praying for you. If you feel like, you know what, I'm actually in that first group of people. Are people that are not going to finish in this particular season. But there's another group of people who are going to finish 50-50 or so-so. These are people, yes, they are going to finish, but they will not finish effectively. Yes, they are going to go through this pandemic, but maybe they're not going to go and finish well. They will not finish with the same energy. They will not finish better. Yes, they might go through and just hold on, but you know they're not going to be effective. They will not be what they wanted to be. Are you in that second group of people? Are people that, yes, maybe you're going to finish, but you not finish well. You're going to finish so-so. You're going to, to finish 50-50. But there is another group of people I want to address right now. These are the people who are going to finish strong. These are the people whose attitude and posture is that, you know what, I want to finish strong. I want to finish strong spiritually. I want to finish strong socially. I want to finish strong emotionally. I want to finish strong in my career. I want to finish strong in my marriage. I want to finish strong in whatever God has put in my heart in chasing my God dreams. I want to finish strong. And this is what I want to pray tonight. That may you finish strong. I feel there is somebody right now who gave up on their spiritual journey. I, I, I feel right now there is somebody who has given up in their pursuit of purpose, in serving people. You are so discouraged that you gave up on everything. But I want to say tonight that you will not finish badly. Because I said in the first group of people, our people will not finish at all. They're going to quit. There are people who are going to finish 50-50. But I want to say that every single one of us, God is calling us to finish strong. Listen to somebody who was going through a lot. Somebody who was facing threats, you know, of death. Everything around him was gloom and sorrow and suffering and trials and persecution. But he had an attitude of finishing strong. And I want to say, this is what God wants us to have tonight. An attitude to finish strong. Listen to what Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. He says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. Or that I have already reached perfection. Paul is saying, I have, I have not reached yet. I'm still going through the journey. I'm still aiming and, and, and pushing on with life. I have not reached. But listen to what he says. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. He's saying, I'm going to press on to the purposes of God. I'm going to press on. 
to that which God laid hold for me. I'm going to press on to my miracle. I'm going to uh, press on to my blessing. I'm going to press on to my destiny. Somebody right now, wherever you are, you need to say, I'm going to press on in my marriage. I will not quit on my husband. I will not quit on my wife. I'm not going to quit on my teenagers. I will not quit on my studies. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to quit on my passion. I am going to press on. And then, then he goes on to verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past. And looking forward to what lies ahead. I am forgetting the past. You know, majority of us, we are held back by our past. We are still talking about the pre-COVID life. We are still talking about the pre-COVID joy, the pre-COVID freedom, the pre-COVID blessings, the pre-COVID, you know, uh, the kind of a life we used to have. And every time, instead of focusing to what which God is calling us, we are still looking back. But Paul said, I'm forgetting the past and, I am, and I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race. Come on now. Somebody God is saying to you right now, I want you to finish strong. I want you to press on and finish your race. Finish your race. Don't quit on that passion for reading books. Don't quit your passion on starting that business. Don't quit on your dream on establishing that business. Don't quit on your dream to pursue your MBA. Don't quit on your dream on those relationships and friendships. Don't quit. Finish the race. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. This is God's message for us today. God is calling us to finish strong. To press on to finish the race. There is somebody right now, maybe you is watching me. Depression has been, there's been a cloud of depression over you. I want to declare you're going to finish the race. You are not going to give in to suicidal thoughts. You are not going to give in to isolation. But you are going to look for community. You are going to look for brothers and sisters who are going to do life with you. This is not the time. To lose on your friendships. This is not the time to lose hope, uh, you know, your hope in you. This is not the time to give up on your dream. There are several things that I want to speak tonight that God is calling us to do. Number one, yes, acknowledge your past. Acknowledge your past. Yes, I know for sure. You know, I don't want to say, you know what, like, no, 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 to be in denial. I don't want us to be in denial. But I want you to acknowledge the past and say, you know what? My life used to be easy. My life used to be okay. Oh, I used to enjoy life before COVID. But now things have changed. I want you to acknowledge your past. I don't want you to be in denial. I want you to say, yeah, things used to be okay. But right now, I am not where I thought I would be. It's okay. Be real with yourself. But there is a second thing I want you to do. I want you to bring it to Jesus. Bring that past to Jesus. Bring your frustration to Jesus. Oh, bring your, your, your disappointment. Bring your anger. Bring your bitterness. Bring your hopelessness to Jesus right now. Paul knew the secret that you know what? I cannot do this life if I try to lean on my own understanding. I cannot do this life if I try to do it in my own strength. Bring it to Jesus. And so right now, wherever you are, would you bring your pain to Jesus? Would you acknowledge and tell the Lord, I feel like quitting, Lord. I feel like quitting on this marriage. I feel like quitting on my passion. But God, I am bringing it to you. I am bringing it to you. The second, the third thing I want us to do tonight is I want you to communicate responsibly. Listen to the language and the tone of Paul. He was not ready to quit on his journey. He was not ready to quit on his dream. The guy was like, I am pressing on. I am pressing on. And today, wherever you are, shout with me and say, I am pressing on. Come on. I am pressing on. Somebody, wherever you are, shout with me and say, I will finish my race. I will finish my race. I will press on. I will not give up. 
I'm going to finish strong in Jesus name. You know, last week I had to speak to myself. There are moments where you need to prophesy to yourself. There are moments where you don't need a pastor to pray for you. You need to speak up to yourself. You need to prophesy over your life. And I stood before my mirror and I said, "God, I'm going to press on. I am not quitting. I am not going to look back. My father, I know for sure you are calling me to finish strong." Would you right now lay hands on yourself or go to a mirror and look at yourself and say, "You know, Joro, you will finish strong. You will finish the race. You will not quit. You are not going to finish weak. You are not going to finish so so or 50-50. You are going to finish strong in Jesus name." And the last thing which I want to talk about and then we're going to pray is that declare the goodness of God. Declare and confess the goodness of the Lord. I have found something special when I declare the goodness of God in my life. Uh, something changes on the inside. My outside may not change, but something changes on the uh, on the inside. Uh, my circumstances may not change. Uh, my situation may not change. Uh, my pain may not go away, but something on the inside changes. And do you know what changes? Faith starts to rise up when I confess the goodness of God. When I recount God's faithfulness, faith starts to rise up. Hope starts to rise up. And do you know what? I start looking at my circumstances through the eyes of God. And this is what I want us to do right now. Declare the goodness of the Lord. Oh, somebody open up your mouth wherever you are and say, "God, you have been faithful." Look back at what the Lord has done. Look at the miracles he has performed. Look at the doors he has opened in the past. Oh, look at the many times he has delivered you. Look at the many times he has protected you. Look at the many times he has provided for you. I want you to recount. I want you to confess the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God. Paul was able to say, "My God, I'm going to pursue God." He looked back and he was able to recount God's goodness. and something starts to change inside of you maybe not on the outside but inside of you and so i want to pray right now as we conclude this you know uh, this session i want to declare you will finish strong i sense the lord is uh, is actually showing me right now a couple that we have been talking about separation but as you are listening to me God is saying to you don't quit on that marriage don't quit on your husband don't quit on your wife finish strong oh the good lord who began the good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion oh there is a teenager right now or a young adult who feels like you know what everything about my life is crumbling down oh god is saying to you finish strong Somebody right now at the beginning of the year you wanted to start a business don't quit on that business don't quit on that idea oh i pray right now this is your season to step out by faith step out by faith why because at the end of the day i believe with all of my heart that all things work together for good to those who are called by Jesus to, to those who are called by the name of Jesus and those who are called according to his purpose. And so I want to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray Father Lord for every person watching me. May they finish strong. Oh Father, may they finish the race. I know things are tight. I know things are hard. I know there is frustration and hopelessness. I know there is pain and agony and sorrow. But today we are declaring like apostle Paul we gonna press on I may crawl to the end oh I may just you know even walk try to crawl with my hands but I'm gonna finish strong ah I'm gonna finish strong I will not quit on my dream I will not quit on my family I will not quit on my business I will not quit on the vision that God has given me. I'm going to finish strong in Jesus wonderful name. And so right now, 
May the spirit of the Lord energize you. May the spirit of the Lord start causing faith to rise up. May you be filled with hope. May the power of God come upon you for the Bible says even to those who are weary the Lord is able to strengthen them and they are going to to run and walk and so high like an eagle. I declare right now the spirit of the Lord to come upon you in the name of Jesus. May you finish strong. May you finish strong. Pray for yourself right now. Declare over your life, I will finish strong. I will press on. I will not give up. Oh, by December, I shall be someone, you know, who's going to be better. My life is going to be at a good place in Jesus name. And as we sing this song that you are the alpha and omega, I want you to declare that God was was in my beginning. He's going to be in my end. God knows where I started. He knows where I'm going to finish. We are declaring right now, he's the alpha and omega that my God who was there when I was being formed in my mother's womb, he's going to be with me every day, every week, every month, every year of my life. I am finishing strong. Why? Because I know the alpha and omega. I know the author and the finisher of my faith you are the alpha and omega in Jesus name amen
Thank you. 